Hey everybody, this is my first YouTube video about toys. Um, I My name's George. I write about comic books for a living. I love toys. I collect them. Right now, lately, I've been collecting uh, Toy Biz Marvel figures from the 90s. Specifically, I've been working on my Marvel Action Hour Iron Man and Fantastic Four line, building that up, and I'm getting pretty close to completing at least part of it. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about two of the figures from that line that I got uh, from the Marvel Action Hour line. But first off, I'm going to give a little bit of history. A lot of you probably know this, but Toy Biz is a company that was founded partially, I think, founded by Avi Arad, whose name you'll definitely know if you're into comic books or comic book movies, because he's been a producer in like all the X-Men and Spider-Man movies and some of the Iron Man ones and others. Um, he was the marketing guy behind Toy Biz. Uh, they started off in the late 80s and early 90s they picked up marvel and dc licenses they picked up a dc license from kenner after they stopped doing superpowers you can see the reflection of the video on my glasses and i'm totally looking the wrong direction that's funny um they made a few dc figures just one wave and then they uh moved on to marvel and the marvel line they started with marvel superheroes it had i think eight figures including a version of one of the figures we're going to look at today in the marvel action hour line then they started the X-Men line. Everybody remembers the Toy Biz X-Men figures, the Wolverine with the claws that popped out of his arms, Cyclops with the light up visor, Magnetic, Magneto, everybody knows that. Um, and the X-Men line was super popular and made Toy Biz so big that they were able to actually buy Marvel Comics when Marvel went into bankruptcy and kind of solidify that partnership for a really long time. So as a result, Toy Biz made tons and tons and tons, hundreds of Marvel figures from like super obscure characters like Silver Fox and like Aurora and North Star all the way to like, you know, got dozens of versions of Spider-Man and Wolverine ranging from the classic to the absurd. Marvel Action Hour is the third line they came out with after X-Men, which just continued on and grew and grew and grew. But the Marvel Comics, Marvel Super Heroes line that they did was canceled after just three waves. And uh, they moved on to Marvel's Action Hour, which was a one hour cartoon block featuring both the Fantastic Four for 30 minutes and Iron Man for another 30 minutes. Both the cartoons are on Disney Plus right now and they're completely absurd. But they spawned really fun action figure lines for the Fantastic Four for Iron Man. And my favorite is Fantastic Four. These are toys I coveted as a kid because the package box art we're gonna look at it is so beautiful and so exciting and the characters are so interesting and weird and obscure along with the classics um got almost the whole line now uh, i'm not going to do a whole review of that we're going to go through it piece by piece we're going to start with fantastic four with two figures that i received as gifts which is why i'm starting with these they're also two of my favorite figures in the line um we're going to talk about i'll show you right here we're going to talk about dr doom and black agar boltagon black bolt Two of my favorite comic book characters, favorite Marvel characters, favorite Fantastic Four characters, and two of my favorite figures in this line, if not Toy Biz figures all over. Um, so we're going to start with Black Bolt. Um, as you can see, I take them out of the packages because, let's be honest, they're not that valuable or expensive, and they're just as abundant on card as off. Um, and so what I did, you can see that I, I'm persnickety and I opened it with a razor blade so I can still hide it. But this, this box art, you can see that it's... Uh, mirrored probably um it's beautiful it shows off his action feature if you're a fan of toy toy box art this was an exciting box to look at as a kid because you can see all these characters and there's everyone you know there's dr doom silver surfer mr fantastic and then who the hell is terax black bolt you probably don't know some of these characters and then down here you got the iron man line which i will get into eventually because some of these figures i do have on my shelf right now um every character every figure in these lines comes with an action feature. Black Bolts is that he uh, wears a, got a button on his belt. <laughs> his arms pop out for flying. He's got this cape. Black Bolt's a flyer. So, and then it's got a little bio here. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but the box art's great. It's got this holographic lenticular four on here. You've got the whole Richards family, you know, Black Bolt nameplate with flight ready wings. Good stuff. As seen on Marvel Action Hour. There it is. And this looks like it eventually, at some point in its life, came from KB Toys, which is not surprising because they sold thousands of these, millions of these. So Black Bolt is the Lord of the Inhumans. He's 
a king of Adelan. He is, as an inhuman, he is sort of like a human, but he's inhuman. He's been modified by Terrigen Mist to have superpowers. Black Bolt's superpower is that his voice is so strong and so powerful that if you hear it at any volume, it can do you harm from like just busting your eardrums at the lowest whisper to obliterating you to dust if he shouts hard enough. Um, that's about the gist of it. He can also fly. As you can see, he's got flight-ready wings, super strong. His wife is Medusa of the Inhumans. They made a figure of her. They made a couple other Inhumans, Gorgon and uh, Triton, who are both pretty fun figures. Triton's one of the most solid in the line. We'll talk about him later. Anyway, this was a gift from Pierce Lydon, my good friend Pierce Lydon, co-writer at Newsarama. We've done some podcasts and stuff together, some comic things. Anyway, very close friend of mine. And uh, they were kind enough to gift me this for my birthday, which happened on Sunday, the 30th. I turned 37, uh, which is an awesome age to get toys for your birthday. Um, so what I love about this Black Bolt figure, let's start with the obvious. The colors are great. That dark blue with the very light, sort of weird kind of periwinkle blue really pops. And when I was a kid and I saw this on the shelf, this is not a figure I had as a kid, I was so excited to learn who this character was just because of how interesting and weird his costume looked designed by Jack the King Kirby, of course, whose birthday was August 28th. Uh, and how bright the colors were and just how interesting he was. You don't see a lot of characters that are simultaneously like sort of dark colored, but also very like sort of bright and poppy. Um, his articulation's excellent. His arms are a little bit limited at the shoulders because they only stay in this sort of pattern. I have a suspicion that Kenner, when they gave... so. A little bit of history, we talked about Toy Biz at the beginning of their life, took over the DC line from Kenner, and they also got a bunch of molds and stuff from the Superpowers line, which was DC's, or Kenner's original DC line, one of the greatest toy lines of all time. Um, Golden Pharaoh from that line had a very similar action feature. He squeezed his legs to do it, but his arms popped out like this, similar joints. I have a suspicion that a lot of the action features in this line are kind of based off ones that they cribbed from Kenner. Anyway. This is one of the better ones. It works pretty consistently, and it only limits his articulation in that way, which isn't that bad because most of the time you're going to want him either ready to fight or ready to fly, and he can pretty much take those poses. Um, you know, his legs are a little bit bowed, but that makes for really nice flight stances when you're putting him together. His knees bend nicely, and he's got these very nice calves. Black Bolt stands up very easily. A lot of the Toy Biz figures do, even the ones that seem like they won't because they're made for kids to play with, which is part of why I take them out of the package, because they're for playing with. Um, he doesn't turn at the waist. His head moves, hips move. Some of the figures in the Marvel Action Hour line, especially the later ones, had really excellent sculpts and very poor articulation. Black Bolt strikes a really nice balance, and one thing I really love, his face sculpt is really excellent. It's kind of nondescript, doesn't look like anybody in particular, but he's got that really strong jaw. The one thing that's funky is his sort of like blocky antenna, which I guess... You know, it makes sense so that it wouldn't pop off if you just had the tuning fork. Um, yeah, I love this figure. He's one of the best in the line, especially when you consider how the action feature interacts with the posability and the uh, articulation. And when you look at the design and sculpt, especially with the, the colors, a lot of the Toy Biz figures are pretty simple. They don't have like a lot of paint apps. Black Bolt doesn't suffer from that at all because he's got a very simple costume to begin with. Just very regal, striking. It's kind of, it's not exactly black, but it's dark blue. It's got bolts. It's Black Bolt. Action ready flight wings. So let's talk about a good friend, Victor Von Doom. Sovereign Monarch of Latveria, sworn enemy of Reed Richards. You know, my favorite comic book character probably. Um, so here's his box. All the Marvel Action Hour line boxes are exactly the same, aside from like maybe the shape of the, the, the bubble and what it says on the nameplate, of course. The fronts are all the same. The backs are a little different. This is another Wave 1 figure, so you can see that it's also got the same array on there. And uh, we're going to talk about Doctor Doom's action feature here. You can kind of see a preview here. Now, this is a gift from another friend of mine, Land Pitts. Thank you so much, Land, who is also kind enough. Uh, they write, uh, he writes Beast Heart Strikers, uh, some other stuff. You can find him online, on Twitter. Uh, anyway, uh, Pierce is on Twitter, too. I didn't really plan this out in advance, but we're going to tag him. Um, so, Dr. Doom, this is a great figure for a thousand reasons, and I'm going to get into all of them. Maybe my favorite Dr. Doom action figure 
I've owned. So Toy Biz really only did two Doom figures, I think. There may be a third one floating out there. He was one of the original figures they did, and then they did this one. And they didn't really improve on perfection. Uh, this is another one that I didn't really have as a kid. Her nose hair. Anyway, um, I'm 37. I'm old. I can't help it. Uh, I didn't have it as a kid, but I did have the other one. The other one had an interesting action feature, which was that his hand would spin like a drill, and you could put a drill in his hand. It's fine. Um, the sculpt was okay. It was a little stiffer. This Doom has a wider stance. This is the line where they really started getting into, um, around 1994-95, is when they really started getting into more interesting sculpts. Kind of the golden era, to me, of Toy Biz sculpts. They started to get a little more eccentric and juxtaposed, um, a little caricatured uh, after this, but still a lot of good figures after this. Uh, anyway, this Doom is great. His knees and his legs bend his skirt's a little funny because it bends but it also serves as a skirt on his tunic um his cape is removable it is a little bit funko funky in proportion it seems like the neck should be deeper it doesn't quite want to sit exactly right on his neck i'm also not putting it on correctly when you just slide it on like this doesn't want to sit quite right under his hood sits a little off his shoulders probably could trim that a little bit which I'm not afraid to do because this is a keeper um still looks great anyway the colors are great the two-tone green and the gold is really nice very classic Jack Kirby design the face is really nice and menacing his eyes are really really piercing you love that and the mouth is wide and creepy and he's got that really rounded hood like Jack Kirby drew. It's very true to his design, especially with the wide belt. And the armor design, the silver is good. It's not chrome like some of the figures they had in the Iron Man line. It's not like chromed like that, which is good because they wear a little bit. Um, his gun, I think, is from like Garrison Kane from the X-Men line. They reused a lot of accessories, especially when a character needed random accessories. Anyway, so Doom... Let's talk about his articulation a little more. His hips and uh, his knees. His feet look nice. Look at that sculpt on his armor on his legs. And the jointing on this, the round like pin joints, looks really nice with Doom's armor actually. Kind of really fits. Got it up on his elbows too. Um, you can see right here. This elbow bends. The other one doesn't. Um, so Doom, when he, you take him out of the package, his hand is posed in a little bit of a problematic uh, fashion, but it's very much a Jack Kirby kind of like pose for his fist and his clawed hand. One thing that's really great about this figure, a lot of the figures, especially in the Fantastic Four line, especially the villains, have really weirdly posed hands where they're like sort of like inside like this, kind of almost unplayably clawed. Um... And they don't rotate. It seems like maybe they were going to, and there's some things missing that were not included in the final um, production, probably to save money. And uh, we'll get into some of that with the figures that really suffer from it later. Not that big a deal for the most part, especially for Doom. Um, his hand and his wrist actually do turn, which is really beautiful for posing it in different ways, like Richards. Ah, so there's his action feature. So Dr. Doom is the most brilliant man in the world. He's the second greatest sorcerer in our entire dimension. His only limitation is his arrogance. He is the ruler of Latveria. He wears a suit of powerful armor. He can build anything. He built a time cube, time travel device, a time platform. He's canonically the inventor of time travel in the Marvel Universe, unless that's been retconned, which who the hell knows at this point. Anyway, his hated enemy, Reed Richards, has one edge on him, which is he can stretch his body to great degrees. So what does this Doctor Doom action figure have but fucking extendo arm? Look at that. That's amazing. As my roommate said as we were looking at this, shout out Adam, he was like, did Dr. Doom design this figure, which is why I love it. It's so arrogant for Dr. Doom to have a stretch arm. The Reed Richards figure has stretchy arms like Stretch Armstrong, but this is just, it's the, the huge, no one reaches farther than Doom, not puny Richards. Like, just, it's perfect. 
you can't... I, I, it's hard to capture hubris in an action feature, in an action figure. It's hard to capture the arrogance that Doctor Doom should and does have as a character. And somehow giving him a stretchy arm where Reed Richards, that's his like whole thing, is just chef's kiss. It's brilliant. Whoever designed this action feature at Hasbro, whoever decided, let's put that on Doctor Doom because they maybe probably reuse the same sort of arm and hand. I don't know. It's a little bit better sculpted than the original by far, which is very stiff. And um, just Whoever figured this out, Dr. Doom will reach out and choke you. It's perfect. You love it. A lot of them have like really punchy designs in their action features, but this is one of the best. It works really well, really easily. It's not so obtrusive to his posing because you can really capture, like I said, those Kirby like claw, like yes, uh, menacing villainy kind of look. And uh, even the button on his arm is not too annoying in where it's placed and how it looks. If you put his arm forward like this, it's kind of hidden by the cape. I might have to turn the cape down so it sits on his shoulders a little bit more consistently, but overall, both of these figures, I'm gonna rate for this line, for Toy Biz, they're, they're gonna be 10 out of 10. Like just across the board, the colors on both of them are excellent. The sculpts and the features are just really good, just unparalleled to me in the Toy Biz canon in terms of representation of the character and also just how they look on their own. Doom has this cool accessory. Uh, Black Bolt didn't come with one, doesn't need one. Um, yeah, so I I definitely love both of these figures. Thank you, Pearson Land. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk more about my Toy Biz collection, especially the Fantastic Four, soon. Oh, and as um, Dr. Doom would say on the cartoon, beware you Primrose Poppin' Jay! It's the stupidest line, look it up.